All right, welcome finally. It's a good thing we've got tech people that can figure out the issues around here. Welcome to Maranatha on this Sunday morning. Uh, a couple announcements here. Um, there's a request to help decorate the church for November 26 at 6 p.m. Uh, contact Gloria Hunter if you're interested in doing that. Um, that same evening, the youth will be doing a cookies and card making, and you can contact Krista Young to let her know if you're going to be attending that. Uh, also coming up on Monday, November 28th, is the congregational meeting. And that'll be on Zoom, and it'll be in the newsletter for details on that. And this morning, we're, uh, Pastor Case Vink will be preaching for us. And before he comes up for the call to worship, Krista has an announcement on the Advent. Good morning, everyone. Um, so last year, we handed out wreaths to any family who wanted one. Can you all see it? Okay. Um, so because the Advent season is starting next Sunday, we want to encourage anyone who's interested to pick up a wreath. It's just a small wreath with a candle with um, pink and purple ribbons to coincide with peace, joy, hope, and love. Um, we're also encouraging you, if you would like to grab one, that we will be giving you um, a download of a really beautiful uh, devotion that you can do throughout the season of Advent, um, either individually for yourself or with your family. Um, what's great about this devotion is there's one for families with small children, and there's another one for families with older children, but they coincide with each other. So if you, they're short, so you can read both. And that way, all members of your family, like mine, who have younger and older, can participate. So some of you actually already have these from last Christmas. So if you still have yours, pull it out. Let me know if you need a new candle, because I have a few extra. For anyone else who is interested, there is a pile of them just outside this door on the table. Um, and if there's anyone at home who would like one, um, they can come to the church and pick one up. You just have to let Emma know when you're, when you're going to come so that you, she can make sure she's here or vice versa. Um, and if you cannot come in to pick up a wreath and you would still like one, please let the office know by email or phoning, and we will deliver one to you. Um, yeah, and if you have any questions about that, you can ask me. Also, I just want to send out a big thank you to all those who participated in the Thrive giveaway yesterday. A uh, very successful event. Once again, God was able to work through us to bless our community um, and just to really reach out and show the love of Jesus by sharing our items and things that we have been blessed with. Um, I don't actually know how many people came through the doors, but the pile was significantly less when I showed up to clean up, so um, I would say that that was a successful event. So thank you to the volunteers who were there, those who baked cookies, those who set up, and those who cleaned up. We really, really appreciate it. Good to be uh, back with you. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Pastor Case Fink. I'm, uh, you could say I'm one of your old ministers, but I don't like to say that. So I was your transitional pastor for, uh, before Pastor Allen. So it's nice to be back to worship with you again today. And um, as we uh, enter this space of worship and our, uh, focus our hearts on worship, I hope that you can say this with the psalmist from Psalm 18. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock, he's my fortress, and he's my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge. Let's pray. Gracious God, we uh, open our hearts and our lives and our community to worship you together. We know that when we are gathered, you are here. And so we ask you, Lord, to bless us so that we may bless you, may we that we may praise you, that we may hear you, that we may live with you, that we may rejoice with you, and that we may discover your love today in this service. We ask you to uh, instill us with your spirit and to keep us in your grace. 
In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. Please rise for God's blessing. Your God greets you this morning. Grace and mercy, peace be to you. From God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, in the power of his Holy Spirit and all God's people said, amen. Let's worship. You give light, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope. Restore every heart that is broken, and great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. You give life, you are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken and great are you lord it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise we pour out our praise it's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Shout your praise, our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise, we pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. It's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise to you only.
to this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to His. Oh, how strange and divine, I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side the Savior He will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need His power is displayed. To this I hope my Shepherd will defend me, through the deepest valleys he will be. Oh, the night has been won, and I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. No fate I dread, I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price it has been paid for Jesus died and suffered for my pardon and he was raised to overthrow the grave to this I hope my sin has been defeated Jesus now and ever is my plea oh the chains are can sing, I am free, yet not I, but through Christ in me. With every breath, I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home, and day by day, I know he will renew. Until I stand with joy before the throne To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus All the glory evermore to Him When the race is complete, still my sin shall repeat Yet not I, but through Christ in me when the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. And God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of a land of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above, or the earth beneath, or the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children for the sin of the parents to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. The Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day. By keeping it holy, six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. And on it you shall not do any work, neither you, your son, daughter, your male or female servants, your animals, or any foreigner residing in your towns. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, but he rested the seventh day, and therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother, so that you may live long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor, and you shall not covet 
Your neighbor's house, you shall not cover your neighbor's wife or his male and female servants, his ox, donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. We often read uh, those, and we call them the commandments. When you, when you think about it, they are really what I would call boundaries. They're boundaries for our relationship. Uh, we are who we are. And God shapes us along with who we are by giving us this framework within which to live. So our whole identity, which we're talking about this morning in the message, our identity is made up of God shaping us and who we are. The trouble with that is, you know, God knows us well and knows that we don't live that perfectly. And that's why, as we just sang, Jesus came uh, to Forgive us to heal us uh, from our sin and to give us that new spirit energy that lives in us so that we might be made new. Let's pray. Gracious God, we uh, come before you uh, knowing uh, that even though uh, we are who we are, we need your direction in life. And we come to confess, Lord, that our hearts have been imperfect, our lives have been imperfect, our relationships have been imperfect, uh, we have sinned and fallen short of your glory. We recognize our limitations. We recognize, recognize that even as we try to live with you and for you, it doesn't always go the way we wish, the way we want. So we ask you this morning, O oh Lord, for your forgiveness, for your grace. We are uh, shaped by your grace more than anything else. We are shaped by your love more than anything else. And we ask you in Jesus' name that you would renew us and strengthen us and live in us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Fighting voices in my mind that say I'm not enough. Every single lie that tells me I will never measure up. Am I more than just the sum of every heart in every love? me once again just who I am because I need to know who oh, you say I am love when I can't feel a thing you say I am strong when I think I am weak you say I am held when I am falling short and when I don't belong Oh, you say I'm yours, and I believe, oh, I believe what you say of me, I believe. The only thing that matters now is everything you think of me. You I find my worth in you I find my identity Ooh, oh, You say I am love when I can't feel a thing And you say I am strong when I think I am weak And you say I am held when I am falling short And when I don't belong Oh, you say I am yours, and I believe, oh, I believe, what you say of me, I believe. I'm taking all I have, and now I'm laying it at your feet. You have everything. 
every failure, God, you'll have every victory. Ooh, oh, you say I am love when I can't feel a thing. You say I am strong when I think I am weak. You say I am held when I am falling short. When I don't belong, oh, you say I am yours. And I believe, oh, I believe what you say of me. I believe, oh, I believe, yes, I believe what you say of me. I believe. All right, let's, uh, let's pray for a blessing as we uh, open the word. Uh, gracious God, we uh, long to hear your voice. We love it when you speak to us. And uh, we know that we find your voice in this word of yours. And, and so we ask that your spirit will uh, inspire us and help us to hear and help us to be blessed so that we might live as your people, so that we might love as those who are loved and that we might have you uh, completely living within us. We ask for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. So the, the sermon is entitled, Who Do You Say I Am? And our script, first scripture is taken from uh, the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 16, beginning in verse 13. Well, maybe I have to be, there we go. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you? He asked, who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, you're the son of the living God. And Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I'll build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And then he ordered his disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. And from that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed, and on the third day to be raised to life. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this will never happen to you. And Jesus turned and said to Peter, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. And Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world and yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? 
For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they've done. Truly, I tell you, some of you who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And then from Romans chapter 8, beginning at uh, Romans chapter 10, beginning at verse 6. The righteousness that is by faith says, don't say in your heart, who will ascend into heaven, that is to bring Christ down, or who will ascend into the deep, that is to bring Christ up from the dead. Uh, what does it say? The word is near you. In other words, it's neither far up or far down. It's near you. It's in your mouth. And it's in your heart. That is the message concerning faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified, and it's with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. As the scripture says, anyone who believes in him will never be put to shame because there's no difference between Jew or Gentile. The same Lord is the Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Okay, next week, uh, Advent starts. We're there. One month today from today is the winter solstice, December 21. It's the darkest day when our land and our whole earth starts tipping back towards the sun. And then after that comes Christmas. Advent prepares you for Christmas. And today I want to prepare you for Advent by talking about your identity. Oh, I think I went backwards. There we go. In 2018, I went to Mexico with a friend. And we spent time visiting Casa Connor. And we went to a market where this Dutch guy was selling strope waffles. I don't understand it either. And as a whole group, we went out to eat at this terrific restaurant uh, on the street in the old section of town. And while we were yakking and eating, and an American tourist walked up to our table, he looked at me, and he blurted out, you know what? You look exactly like Richard Branson. It's uncanny, he says. I was sure that you were him. He was so excited about meeting a famous person in the old town of Puerto Vallarta. Needless to say, he was slightly wrong. I am not the CEO of Virgin Atlantic. Although, what do you think? I don't know. My hair was longer back then, and I had the goatee. But the American, he was so super excited because he was so sure that he was meeting Richard Branson. Unfortunately for him, this case was a case of mistaken identity. When Jesus entered Caesarea Philippi, Matthew 16, verse 13. It sits at the bottom of Mount Hermon. And it is the place where the Jordan River starts. It is not just named for the Roman emperor, but it also has in its boundaries a massive, massive temple for worshiping Caesar Augustus, the Roman emperor. CEO of the empire. And in that very spot, Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? 
In other words, who do people say that I am? And this is where Richard Branson comes in. Just like in the time of Jesus, we are often comparing ourselves to others. We can't help ourselves. We just naturally do it. You know, in the TikTok dances, we either to do the same as someone else or we try to do better than them. We get trying to be more like than anybody else. And look at our clothing trend. Somebody starts a clothing trend. All of a sudden, a yellow hat is worn by a famous person. And guess how many yellow hats are sold that week? Because we want to look like them. Clothing trends are started by people whose identity is well known enough to copy. You know, it actually felt pretty good when that American thought said that he thought I was Richard Branson. It felt pretty good on the inside, to be honest. For a minute, I wondered if anybody might think that besides this guy, until one of the people in my group at the table said, ah, no, that can't be true. Richard Branson's a really handsome guy. <laughs> so that was the end of that. I mean, that's what friends are for, right? To bring me down to earth. Who do people say that I am? The answers are all idealized comparisons that the disciples come up with. You notice that? They do the same thing. They take Jesus over here and compare him to somebody else. A lot of people think that Jesus must be someone else. That he must have a different identity. And some people think that he's John the Baptist. He was the most recent famous prophet who at the Jordan River challenged the authorities and he called people to really turn their lives around again, turn their hearts around. And there were other people who thought that Jesus was actually Elijah, the great prophet who stood up to a king and tried to change a whole nation, calling them to live with a, a spirit-filled life. He was daring to a, attack and confront the, the king and his culture. And then there were others who said, no, he's Jeremiah. That's his identity. Jeremiah, who's told us that our hearts are deceitful, and we are fooled from the inside out, and we are saved from the outside in. Two famous quotes from Jeremiah. I think you probably recognize them are God saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. You know that one, right? You've heard it. Even today, we still mouth the words of Jeremiah, the great prophet. And the other one is, for you know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and not harm you, to give you a future and hope. Jeremiah is still famous today. Jesus, you might be one of the great prophets, one of these guys, or maybe you're one of the other prophets, they said. You may be one of our heroes. You may be somebody famous. You may be someone we already look up to. People are comparing Jesus to others. It's just a natural thing to do. Give him an identity. Give him an identity. People are always talking about you, and social media is hot with rumors, Jesus, about who you are. Advent and Christmas. Advent and Christmas are often focused on what's going on around us, right? We cherish the colorful Christmas lights and all the decorations. We're often driving around the neighborhood, and what do we do? We look for the best decorated house that we can see. It's part of the Christmas identity, as well as that Christmas tree, although it might look really like homely when we get it in the house and we say, oh, we didn't look at that one very well. But once we decorate it with our tinsel and our, all our decorations, 
It looks just great. It's part of our Christmas identity. And then there's all the gatherings we have, the festive foods we have, and the sharing of uh, the season with those who are in need. And then at last again, when we get to Christmas Day, we hear and we sing about the wise men and the angels and the shepherds and Joseph and Mary. And there around the manger, we will gather again at Christmas Day for the birth of Jesus. This is all going on around us. It's all focused out there. The identity of Christmas is out there. And with this next question, Jesus gives you something to think about through Advent. He gives you a focal point. But it's not based on what's happening around you in the world. It's not based on what's going on in this season that's coming up. It's not listening to what other people are saying about Jesus. It's not comparing Jesus to others. It's not comparing your life to somebody else's life. Jesus says, but what about you? What about you? Who do you say that I am? Who do you say that I am? In that saying, in that question of Jesus, you hear that echo from the Old Testament, right? Where God says, I am who I am. I mean, that's a kind of a curious statement. It's somewhat mysterious. It's like saying, Judy is who Judy is. I am who I am. Who do you say that I am? I am who I am. God's identity is mysterious, but God's identity is also intensely confident. It is sure. It is supremely solid. God is sure who God is. And the question is, are you sure about who you are? My psych prof would say that you have a serious self-image problem, Luann. It's a project for Mr. Zebo's art class. We have to do 17 self-portraits in 17 different styles. And uh, from this, you're learning uh, that I'm hard to draw. <laughs> How do you draw yourself? How you see yourself is not an easy question, is it? But our identity is always there in our life. Almost every day we're, we deal with our identity. It affects us all the time. And here's how it shows up. How do you see yourself? That's identity. Are you the same person at church as you are at home? That's identity. I need to find some space. I need to find myself. That's identity. I just saw uh, Will Smith. Will Smith was on the late show, and he was talking about his new book called Will, his autobiography. And you know what he said about that? He said that it was so good, his father has passed away and he feels more free just to tell the true stories of his youth and his childhood. And he's talked about being more authentic. And we hear that a lot today. Being more authentic, that's identity. Who are your friends? 
That's a question of identity. What are you, who are you trying to imitate with your clothing style or your talk or your hairstyle? That's identity. You go into a job interview and people ask you about your strengths and your weaknesses. That's identity. You journal your own life story like my sister is doing. She's writing the whole story of her relationship with her parents and her, her, her life up to now. That's a look at her identity. Do you search your family tree? That's about identity. What kind of people do you like to hang around with? That's identity. What are your most important beliefs? That's identity. These are just all little snippets of the same thing. Who are you really? Eric Erickson, who was a well-respected psychologist, he tells us that our identity is formed over our whole lifetime. It involves who God made you uniquely to be, and it involves your brokenness, and it involves those who affect you in your social circles. A solid identity is the confidence to maintain who you are on the inside the same way as you do on the outside. Who you are is shaped by your own inner understanding of your life and who you, who you are. It's reflected and shaped by those around you, who you live with, who you identify with. Your identity becomes really more clear and more solid when you experience the impact you have on others and their and your identity is also shaped by the impact they have on you. It's shaped by those who are faithful to you. It's shaped by the people that you can really respect and model your life after. Your identity grows in your relationships. But Jesus' question was not, who are you? The question was, who do you say, who do you say that I am? And that is it exactly. Jesus is saying to you, focus on your inside. Focus on your heart. Focus at the core of who you are. And now tell me, when you search your true self, who am I to you? Who am I to you? to you. You know, and we tend to give a quick answer like Peter does too. Oh yeah, here, Jesus, you're our Messiah, you're our Savior, you're my Lord, blah. But Jesus is wanting us to look deeper inside of ourselves. Who am I to you? What part of my identity is Jesus Christ? What part of my identity is part of your identity, Jesus says. What part of who Jesus is becomes part of who you are because he's in your circle. In this passage, uh, you can see Peter. Peter is the solid one, right? He's the outspoken one. He's the rock. You can see Peter wrestling with this. This is not, sometimes we just read this first part, but let me hold up these things for you. First of all, he blurts out, you're the Messiah. You're the son of the living God. And that's an awesome testimony that leads Jesus to bless him six verses later, or to bless him. But six verses later, Peter pulls Jesus aside, and what does he do? He rebukes Jesus. He tells him off. Jesus says, or Peter says, never, Lord, this, all this suffering stuff, this murder, this raising from the dead is not going to happen to you. In other words, I will not let this happen. I will save you. I will save you. Suddenly, Peter's identity, in his identity, he sees himself switching from needing a Messiah to being a Messiah. And now Jesus calls him Satan. 
Get behind me, Satan. Peter, the rock, the rock on whom he has to build has become a stumbling block. Peter is struggling with his identity. He's struggling with where Jesus fits into who he is and how he lives. He's struggling with his ambivalence about Jesus being the Lord of his life. And Jesus puts it this way. Peter, you have left the concerns of God out of who you are. That's why I'm sharing with you this question of Jesus as we prepare to enter the Advent season. Week by week, as you see and hear the experiences uh, of the Advent word, a different word each week leading up to Christmas, I want you to ask yourself Jesus' question and just to sit with it for a while. Who do you say that I am? Who am I to you, really? How does Jesus shape who I am and how I live my life? Look for new aspects. Look for new insights each week throughout Advent and wrestle with how those things that you're hearing, how do they really impact the way you live and who you are and how they affect your identity. It'll make you more confident in who you are. It'll make it more clear to yourself who you really are. In Romans chapter uh, 10, verse 6 to 8, Jesus says, or Paul says, righteousness that is by faith says, don't say in your heart who's going to ascend to heaven to bring Christ down, who will descend into the deep to bring Christ up from the dead. What does it say? The word is near you. It's in your mouth. It's in your heart. That is the message concerning the faith that we proclaim. If you declare with your mouth Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you will be saved. This is the completion, the completion, Paul says, of your salvation. This is the completion of your salvation. Salvation begins from the outside, and it comes into you. It enters in you. Jesus puts it this way in the Gospel of John. I am in you, and you are in me. And salvation is complete when you live from the inside out, Paul says. What you believe in your heart is confessed in your voice, in your mouth. Your heart, your identity is lived out in all that you say and do. And just like Peter, this is not going to happen magically in your life. It's a long, lifelong wrestling to get there. And that's why we're so blessed when we have these seasons like Advent and Christmas to strengthen your identity in Christ. These are the things that the Father can reveal within you that will bless who you are. Verse 17 when they shape who you are. And that's important because, that's important not because it changes God. It's important because it changes you. Who do you say that I am? Amen. Let's respond in song uh, with the song, Who You Say I Am. Perfect fit.
Uh, please stand with us and sing this song. come to the Lord in prayer, there's a few things I want to just mention. Uh, if you're wondering where Pastor Allen is, he had this Sunday off. He's got a sabbatical Sunday so he can rest and be rejuvenated. Um, Gordon Milne's still recovering from his stroke and uh, I got a note from Pastor Allen that Minnie Ninehouse has had a return of her cancer and she's now returned to the hospital. And this past week, Wendy Vanderwerf's mother, Alice McDonald, passed away. So those are a few things that we're going to be praying for. So, all right, let's come to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come to you this morning near the end of November, and we express the gratitude and thankfulness for all that you've done for us. You're amazing and a wonderful God. We have a lot to be thankful for. Uh, we'd like to thank you for the success of the, the Thrive giveaway this weekend. It was attended by many, and there was a lot that received blessings from this. We'd like to thank you for the youth night that we ha had this last Saturday as well. The children had a good time and were blessed by being together. We ask that you give Pastor Allen a, a good day of rest so that he can be rejuvenated for this coming season. It's been a long, hard year for learning how to, to minister to a congregation during this last year and a half that we've had. We'd like to pray that you bless us through this Advent season as a church and 
give us a chance to remember that you sent Jesus to us on Christmas Day to forgive us for our sins and, and reconcile us to you. We'd like to pray for our church family. We remember Gordon Milne as he's recovering from a stroke and he needs strength and he needs you to be with him for that. We ask that you be with Minnie Ninehouse and her family as the cancer has returned and there's a lot of things that are going to be happening and a lot of unknowns. Comfort her and her family as they, as they go through this. We ask that you be with uh, the family of Wendy Vanderwerf as her mother Alice passed away. We ask that you provide the peace and comfort that this family needs in this time of mourning. Lord, we ask that you be with our world and as in this week we've had a, a huge rainfall in BC and has resulted in many floods. We pray that you provide the means for these people to recover and rebuild their lives from this high waters that has damaged their livelihoods. Help the people to remain patient with one another as this takes time and does not always go as smooth as we think it should. We pray that you bless this uh, uh, the upcoming congregational meeting for our church. We ask that you give, you, you be with our leaders and provide them the wisdom as they're trying to, to bring the church together in these trying times. We thank you for sending your son to be with us. Please bless us in everything that we do. In your name we pray, amen. Something to say? No. Then you. I'm glad somebody knows what I need to do. So, um, I just want to. I do want to say thank you. Uh, I know a couple of months ago, two or three months ago, I, I know you prayed for me. Um, I had cancer, and my cancer all of a sudden took off this summer, and I had to have emergency surgery for prostate cancer, and um, as of uh, this past week, uh, the news is that I have no detectable PSA, which if you know anything about cancer, means I have no more cancer. So, so although I, want, I just wanted to thank you for your prayers and uh, for uh, holding me up. It meant a lot to me uh, during the time that I was um, struggling with that. It was a tough time, but I'm good, I'm blessed. So you arise now and receive the blessing of God as we as you go your way and as we enter back into our lives and live as people who are filled with the goodness of God and with Christ. God sends you on your way with his blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. May he lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. And all God's people said, Amen. Calm and broken for my regard. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. It is well with me. Far be it from me to not believe Even when my eyes can't see And this mountain that's in front of me Will be thrown into the midst of the sea 
through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. Through it all, through it all, it is well. Through it all, through it all, my eyes are on you. And it is well, it is well. So let go my soul and trust in him. The waves and wind still know his name. So let go my soul and trust in him. The waves and wind still know his name. The waves and wind still know his name. It is well. Oh